and then down here. So down here, we can uh, tell the machine whether we've got a pacemaker in on the patient or not. So press the pacing icon, and you can change it from off to on, and that'll tell the machine to look for pacing spots for a patient who's paced. Up here next to the heart rate, you'll be able to see that we've now got the white icon that says the pacemaker is on. For the time and date, because the machine isn't necessarily connected down to power the whole time, the time might get out of um, synchronisation. Yeah. So if we touch on the time there, it'll bring up this little box that enables us to go in and make a change yeah. to the details. And once we've made that change, we just need to simply press store date and time. And then that'll make a change up here to our date and time. Oh. Right, and then where it says general, this is the profile list. So if I touch on general, it'll give us a drop down menu that presents all of the current profiles in the monitor. The general profile is the one that it defaults to, as we can tell by having a little diamond yep. next to it. Um, sedation, Nero, Page General, Neonate General, and No Red will all change the different settings in the background that the monitor is going to currently be using. Obviously for paediatrics and neonates, that will affect the default alarm limits yeah. and potentially also the, the inflation pressure of the non-invasive cuff. So cool. we can go, yep. in, go in and change um, to whatever profile we require for the current list wherever we are. It'll also change, so press confirm, and that'll change the, uh, the default screen that we end up in as well. So up here in the screen list, because we've gone into the Neuro profile, we've now got the Neuro screen list. Again, if I touch on that, we'll get a drop down list that gives us all of the different screens that are available to us. So if we use the arrow key here to arrow up, you can see up here we've got six wave, six wave trends. Um, if I press on six wave trends, you'll see in the background there, it brings up some trend boxes on the left of the screen there. So this just purely changes the layout of the information and how it's presented to us. It doesn't change any of the settings in the background. Okay. In the bottom left hand corner, you'll see the silence and pause alarm buttons. So when you press the silence button, um, if we look up at the top left in the monitor, we can see we've got a current blue alarm that's previously been silenced. So just acknowledging that alarm will actually get rid of our visual and our audible alarm, but it'll leave that banner there while that problem continues to exist. If I go into the pause alarms button, up in, it'll ask us to confirm down the bottom here, up in the top right hand side of the screen we'll then get the alarm, alarm pause countdown so counting backwards from two minutes if you um, have finished having all alarms turned off before the end of the two minute period just go back to the pause alarms key and press it again that will then turn all alarms back on because we've now turned all alarms back on this little blue alarm up in the top left has uh, started to give us the visual icon again and it's also uh, beeping in the background so if we go back to pressing the silence key again they'll then just uh, get rid of the visual and audible and leave that little banner there until we've actually fixed that problem down on the right here you'll see that we've got the main setup key if you press the main setup key you'll now get the menu for everything on the monitor most things are much more easily gotten into by directly pressing on the, the num numeric on the screen that you need to access. Uh, but this is uh, a, a way of getting into any, any parts of the menu. The main screen key down here is like the home button on your iPhone. Press that and you'll end up with a clean screen, no menus on it. Probably one of the... Um, most uh, common questions we get from people in an operating theatre environment is will my pressures come up automatically when I plug them in? So you can see currently on the screen we've got arterial and CVP waveforms and that's because we're in the six wave screen. If I go and change to the four wave screen... You'll see that now we don't have either of those waveforms up there. And that's simply because we don't have the space for them. So even though they are being collected in the background, you can see, see there that we still have the CVP number coming up. Up here we still have the arterial numeric coming up. 
but no wave forms because we just don't have the space for it. Right. You have two options in this scenario. You can either go and touch on this waveform, bring up the menu that enables us to say change wave. And we can then choose to make that any pressure, in which case it will replace that waveform with our highest priority waveform pressure, which is currently outlined. And then there's spirometry. Yeah. Or we can go into a screen that gives us the ability to fit more waveforms in. Uh, no, eight. There we go. Now the reason that we have arterial and CVP come up is that at the moment we have the ability to put two pressures into the into the line. So down on our MMS, this is our pressure port on the MMS. So we're currently plugging into that our little splitter cable. On the splitter cable, you'll see we have two pressure ports that are labelled one and two. Up on the monitor, if we go into the caterpillar icon and touch on that, we will then get a representation of all of our measurement ports that we can plug into. And you can see here we've got those two pressure ports labelled as ART and CVP. If I touch on ART, it'll bring up the icon of 1 to represent that port on the splitter, whereas CVP will tell us that that's number 2 port on the splitter. This is probably how you'll find the monitor in most scenarios. However, somebody may have been into these ports and done one of two things. They may have changed the label. So in the bottom menu down here, there's a little icon that says change label. That will enable us to change the labeling of that waveform to something else. So you can see up here where CVP was, we'll now get PAP yeah. and it'll be in a different color with a different set of alarm settings, waveform scale, and parameters. So in order to change that in the menu here, touch on PAP, bring that up again, touch on PAP, second one, go to change label, go back to CVP, and it'll change back to CVP, and our waveform will revert back to being blue in colour and appropriately labelled. The other thing that somebody may have done to you in that is actually deactivate this port. So while we've got CVP, that number two port highlighted, in the menu down underneath we've got the deactivate button. If we do that you'll notice that that area now greys out instead of being red in colour. So then our waveform disappears as it's inactive. If we come down to the bottom button again and press activate, We'll come back to red in colour and our CVP will return. There we go. Yeah, no. He reckons you're right. This next one's a little one. Perfect.